Okay, so with that segment out of the way, I want to move into our second and final segment for this episode. I was initially thinking of this as a little bit of a speed round where I would say a word or phrase and you tell me the first game or series or console or character that pops into your head. But I, if you guys want, we can do like name something and then give a bit of an explanation why. It, it kind of feels like that might add a little more depth to it. Um, but anyway, uh, let's get that rolling. So... Sure. First word we're going with, pandemic. Animal Crossing. Uh, okay, I'll take this real quick. Oh, and did you say Animal Crossing? Because I'm saying Animal yeah. Crossing. Yeah. <laughs> it existed purely for like the first like little bit of the pandemic. We we're like, oh, this will be over in two weeks. All we need to do is just like stock up on toilet paper and play Animal Crossing, and I yep. will never touch that game again. Animal Crossing is a close second for me, but the first thing that pops into my mind is Call of Duty Warzone because once the pandemic hit. All of my high school friends started playing video games all of a sudden, and all they wanted to play was Warzone, so I got really into that. That's what really got me into the whole Battle Royale craze, and what really set me on to playing Apex Legends. Okay, most charming. I mean, my mind's immediately going back to Animal Crossing. Okay. Yeah, it's it has, hard. Some, has some decent charm to it. Um, This is a slightly different one, but like, there's a game called Starwall on my PlayStation, and I love yeah. busting that out like late, <laughs> late at night when like things are almost winding down. You're like, hey, hey guys, let's just fuck around in Starwall for like 20 minutes because it's yeah. pretty cute. It's just a bunch of like narwhals with like a bunch of cute little hats, and you're trying to stab each other's hearts, and it's just like really floppy, <laughs> gimmicky controls. It's super fun. I like, I love that about it. Yeah. For me, I have Nick? to go with Ratchet and Clank. Um, yeah. I, I love the animation style. It reminds me of a Pixar movie, but it's also got enough of an adult sense of humor that I still get a laugh out of it. I know the the big also video that blew up on my Pixar channel um, the last uh, couple months was the just the clip of Clank swearing in the new Ratchet and Clank game. <laughs> okay, um, Rage Quit. Ha! Uh, Fallout 4. <laughs> <laughs> Jason? Uh... James Bond games. I, I think specifically Goldeneye. I used to get so mad that I would just yell and punch things. Uh, and that game actually helped me reckon with anger problems at a very young age. I learned how to control my anger by just not playing that game anymore, other than like multiplayer with friends. That's all I could handle. Mm. That's all I could do. Know my lane, stay yeah. within it. I, I mean, like, Rage Quit does, it counts as for me, like, wanting to quit the game entirely. But it. Uh, in terms of like actually like rage quitting during a game, probably Smash because trying to unlock all those characters in melee sometimes left me so frustrated and really wanting to throw a controller around across the room. But yeah, what about you, Nick? Um, it's tough. I'm between two. I'm between Dark Souls and Fortnite. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say Fortnite because I've played more of that. But there are times in matches where I I see kids just building like crazy and i just like i can't even hope to match it and i'm just like okay you know what no fuck this game i'm done yeah, i think yeah, the difference no, is with dark souls you have a team of people who know video games who are smart and are dedicated to building a really tough video game i'm okay with losing to them in fortnite it's 12 year olds and i'm not okay with losing to them <laughs> and i feel emasculated every time it happens <laughs> next phrase you wish people would try it uh, Jack and Daxter. I think that would is even less popular, but like so good. All three very great games. Okay, Kyle. The the first. I mean, this is a speed round, I guess. So the first thing that came into my head was Marvel's Avengers, but the other one that comes to my head is Astral Chain, which was it sold like a million copies, but like uh, I actually fucking loved that game on the Switch. It kind of slaps. Like it's one of those JRPGs that isn't like a full RPG and like. The actual like gameplay action combat of it is really fun, and you have this like, um, I guess he's an alien or like a being from a different dimension that you can like swap out when you unlock different characters and like as you progress in the story, and the combat just becomes really interesting and interesting and fun as you like switch things around and like the combos are really satisfying and fun to pull off. So yeah, I would recommend that if someone's looking for a really fun Switch game to try out. Yeah, it, it looks. Like, a, a fun game. Uh, I was really hesitant to give that a try, but I might check it out. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, can I throw in one more? Go for it. Um, so there was this game that came out for Switch called Starlink Battle for Atlas. Did you play that, mm -hmm. Nick? No, I never played it. I actually... Okay. It, it's literally is one of these games now that it'll go on sale for like five bucks on Boxing Day. Is it one of the if Toys to Life bucks, games? Yes, it is a Toys to Life game, but you don't have to have the toys. I think you can like buy a DLC if you really want to. And if you're spending five dollars on it on, at Boxing Day, like it's kind of worth it because, especially for the Switch version, you can play a Star Fox for the entire game. Cool. And it feels like what I would want a Star Fox game to be if it was an actual Star Fox game. The story is pretty shit because it's just mm -hmm. like this random crew and it has nothing to do with Star Fox outside of the Star Fox crew really being there. But the gameplay is really fun. Like spaceship fly around, shooty, shooty, bang, bang, whatever. Like it, it's really fun for that. So if you can find it for really cheap, I'd say pick it up. My pick for this would be Alan Wake. It's a game that I feel like a lot of people haven't actually heard of. It's It didn't get a lot of attention when it came out, but in my opinion, it's a cult classic. It's such a well-written game with so many well-rounded and interesting characters. Uh, interesting gameplay mechanics, really engaging, and it's what introduced me to survival horror. So, great game. If you haven't checked it out, definitely worth a look. Ooh. That one I've heard about in, in only name. I haven't actually seen really any of the gameplay, so I might actually have to go look it up after the pod. Okay, disappointing. <laughs> Fallout 4. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, Marvel's Avengers. I would say that, um, as much as I love it, it's also a pretty... It's a bit disappointing. Yeah. Jason? So, probably Avengers as well. I didn't even put yeah. that much time into it. I just bought that because you guys were playing and I wanted to hang out mm -hmm. and it, I didn't really care for it all that much. Uh, it was a fun yeah. hit buttons to hit to shoot people, but I don't know, it was not great otherwise. There's one more I could say and that would be Pokemon Sword and Shield. It disappointed me. I hate me. to hear it. I could see that. Um, I would almost pick that for mine too, but I kind of saw it coming knowing how childish the games have started to feel yeah. I would also go with Marvel's Avengers but since both of you said that already I'm going to go with Mafia 3 I loved Mafia 2 it's one of my favorite games Mafia 3, just awful hated the story didn't care for the characters gameplay was pretty lacking and the graphics were awful for when it came out Oof. Very bad draw distance, no no actual screen space reflections. Like, if you looked in a mirror, it looked really, really, like, almost pixelated. It just was a huge disappointment <laughs> for me. Okay, um, next category. Surprisingly good. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say right away here. I've had so much fun playing Mario Golf, and I thought it would be, like, a fun game to pick up as, like, a party game thing. But it's actually quite enjoyable. The mechanics are good. It's what I really like in a quick game where it's like I might have like 15 to 20 minutes in a day to play some video games for bed or something. And god damn it, is it perfect for that. Jason, I was on my Switch at like 2 a.m. a few days ago, and I saw you hop onto Mario Golf. And I was thinking oh, I would yeah, invite you, you to a game, but decided not to because I thought maybe you were just like up late with your roommates <laughs> playing it or something. <laughs> no, that's, that's like one of those. I don't share with them, Nick. <laughs> that is just me. That's like one of those moments where you live in the same house and you come downstairs to get like a, a glass of milk in the middle of the night, and the other person's also there, and you're like, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing here?" <laughs> yeah. Uh, in a similar vein, I would actually say uh, Clubhouse Games. Yes. I feel that's... like some people slept on that a little bit, and. Just the amount of games that you can get in that makes it really worth the purchase. And it's just such an easy one to throw on with somebody online or just like if you have your Switch on the go. It's really Especially because only one of you has to actually purchase the game. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is a huge benefit. That's I'm really happy that they did that. That's like something <laughs> that most other games wouldn't do. Okay, Nick? my pick for surprisingly good is Batman Arkham Asylum. Now, 
I know in hindsight, it, it should be pretty obvious that the Batman Arkham Trilogy <laughs> is say. insanely good and set the bar for superhero video games. But up until Arkham Asylum released, superhero games had such a bad track record. And the last Batman game I had played for that was the movie tie-in game for Batman Begins, which was like, it had okay combat, but the rest of it was, you know, it was typical movie tie-in garbage. Batman Arkham Asylum came out just after The Dark Knight, so Batman's popularity was at an all-time high, and I was so yeah. worried I would be disappointed by this game, and I downloaded a demo of it off the Xbox store. This was back when game developers actually made demos, and had I not played that demo, I probably never would have played the game. I am so glad I did, because it was such a good game. Yeah. Look at Batman out here being like what kickstarts the new era of superhero films and also what kickstarts the new era of superhero games. Okay. Um, absolute travesty. Ooh. Fallout 4. <laughs> like I was gonna say, that's my default answer for anything that pissed me off. I, but... I still can't believe you hated it that much. Jason? It just soured uh... in my memory, dude. Oh, one thing that's popping into my mind right now is the multiplayer for the uh, for the Switch's Mario Party. It started off abysmal, and then it eventually got to now you can play the same boards you can play like on one system. Yep. But the game itself has like four boards, and then it, it got to travesty level when they released recently. They announced that they're going to be releasing like a Mario Party with like a bunch of retro boards and stuff. That should yep. have been a patch for their boring, content-dried-up Mario Party on Switch. That should have... I'd be willing to pay, like, what, five, ten dollars whatever, or five, maybe even up to 15 to get, like, a shit ton of those retro maps. Seriously, it but should have been an expansion. Have such a crappy game. Yeah, no, I thought, like, that was a pretty big waste of my money when I got that, because I got yeah. bored of the board so quickly. No oh, yeah, and I think people were optimistic with that, because some other games have been getting DLC and add-ons and what have you, but with how they've churned out Mario parties like every year or every other year for the past several years, it's the same thing as the NHL, NBA, Madden games. They just come out every year. They you know tweak a couple things here and there, and they expect people to spend eighty dollars on it, and people will. And mm -hmm. I feel like and Nintendo largely gets a pass for that because they churn out such quality games all the time and they really do take their time to craft and perfect these games. But as far as like pricing and gouging players, Nintendo is one of the worst. Like first party Nintendo yeah. games never go on sale because Nintendo is smart enough to know that that's the only place you can play it. So either you're going to pay them the full price or you're not going to play the game. Their yep, reckoning and the resale value work. is crazy. Yeah, I don't think their reckoning's coming anytime soon. No, <laughs> unless no. they start making like stinker games that people don't want to buy, and they would have to make consecutive stinkers. It's the same with yeah. Pokemon. They would have yeah. to make consecutive games that people don't want to buy, or like are just really bad. And I think eventually, then people might turn their nose and walk away. But like. You know, it, if, if these games continue to maintain the same amount of quality, people are still going to show up. Yeah, they still got a lot of rope. No one's really that upset with them yet. Yeah. No. My pick for absolute travesty, Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah, I avoided that one, and I'm glad. <laughs> yep. This is this is an easy one, because how do you launch a game after what eight years of development with? that many bugs that can't run on the consoles it's released for it looks that bad like a, a 20 fps frame rate at best on base ps4 it was it's just such a laughable experience and even on the ps5 like it crashed constantly like every 10 minutes i had to reboot the game i have never been that flabbergasted with how a game with that long of a development cycle and as many delays as it had yeah. could come out in that rough of shape. And I just, I laugh at recover. their, I laugh at their tweet that they put out a, about a month ago where one of the developers said, we are finally satisfied with the performance of Cyberpunk 2077 on all consoles. Buddy, you should have been satisfied when the game <laughs> launched. Yeah, yeah no. Like, you talked last episode about how Fallout 76 has a really good community behind it now. I don't think Cyberpunk 77 will 
ever recover from its travesty launch. Like, they were talking about all these expansions and this, like, additional multiplayer section. Like, they might get that out one day, but I cannot imagine people returning to that game. Even well, they just released they, some like, DLC for it last the week. They they released a, a couple jackets and some cars as DLC, and then they're still talking about doing paid expansions. And, like, after the kind of launch you had... Do you really think you can justify <laughs> asking people for more money to play an expansion? Yeah. Nobody's going to buy it. You should it. be paying them for the expansion. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> okay. PR disaster. I mean, it's hard to beat uh, when Cyberpunk first came out. That was a pretty big mess. They just couldn't fix it. And it got pulled from, like, the PlayStation Store. Like, how often does that happen? Yeah. <laughs> Um, Battlefront. Yeah, Literally, that's my, that's my pick too. A sense of pride and accomplishment. <laughs> yeah, that's that's oh what my I. God. You have to do something very specially stupid to get the most downvoted Reddit post of all time, and who, <laughs> that was, yeah. who other than well, EA would hit that jackpot? It just it works out mm -hmm. so perfectly. Uh, although a special shout out to Activision for their ongoing lawsuit, uh, that's not it's not going so well for them. Yeah, no, that that will continue to keep an eye on and continue to rag on, and obviously that has been a huge PR disaster for them. And more than anything, it's just a disaster socially because that kind of shit just shouldn't be happening. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll uh, we'll keep it going here. Ruined the series. Oh, okay, I got I got one in particular. Go for it. I don't okay. even remember the name of the game. It was such an absolute mistake. But the Jack and Daxter series was three games from I think like PlayStation Two, all in PlayStation Two. But then they did a couple like spin offs. They had like combat racing, which was actually decent. I didn't hate that game. But then they had one for the PlayStation Portable that I don't know if Naughty Dog was even involved in that game. I think someone just paid enough money to be able to put the Jack and Daxter characters in a completely unrelated game about, like, flying planes. And it was the worst thing I may have ever touched. And for some godforsaken reason, I finished that game. <laughs> but it was atrocious. The controls made no sense. Like, the characters, did, they weren't even the same characters. They were just, like... I swear to God, they just were, uh, they paid money to use their likeness <laughs> and be able to use their name so they could, like, market this game. When but you order Jack and Daxter was... off of Wish? Yeah, like, that's exactly what it felt like. <laughs> it's, there's no way that this is actually a game in that series, but apparently it was. And I have no idea what happened. Naughty Dog absolutely overpromised something while they were drunk one night. And then they woke up hoping that whoever they talked to had forgotten about that. But then they're like, oh, we got your contract. We can use Jack in this game about collecting airplane parts, and we're going to do it now. <laughs> Absolute mistake. It that that really... kind of reminds me of the Banjo-Kazooie game where it was all about collecting parts to build a race car and had nothing that's to do with yeah, the rest of Banjo-Kazooie. Like oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's that's mine. Is I don't even remember. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to give the game... The I'm not going to look at look it up. I don't want to know the game's name. I'd be worse <laughs> off remembering what it was called. So I'm not going to do it. Okay, mm. Kyle. I mean, my mind immediately goes to Pokemon, and I would say Pokemon Sword and Shield has really soured my uh, desire to buy any subsequent games in the series. But there is one game that I don't actually know really the name of. But the Transformers War and Fall for Cyber Fall of Cybertron series were some <laughs> of my favorite games. And they tied the it up with the game. Dark of the Moon. Yeah. To, uh, Rise of the Dark the Spark. That was also was the was the game. Yeah. 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 That absolutely killed that game series. And <laughs> I really wanted more, especially with modern consoles. I think Transformers could be so fun. Like the gameplay in the first two, where you were zipping around in your little Cybertron car, transforming, you know, shooting people. Like I was playing as the, the multiplayer in that was so good. 
Oh my I, god! It was it was so awesome. I was so hyped when they released the um, the dinosaur pack for multiplayer customization. Yeah. So much fun with that. But yeah, they they made the mistake of tying the third one into the movies, and I was like, "What the hell is this?" Yeah, <laughs> so stupid. For me, Nick the ruined the series game pick is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now, Assassin's Creed has been struggling for a while to come out with a good story. Um, ever since Assassin's Creed 2, I feel like personally that set the bar for me. And since then, I don't know why I keep getting suckered into going back to this series, hoping it'll be the same as Assassin's Creed 2. But Valhalla, just I draw the line there. It's just it's so excessively long. I saw people on Reddit saying, well, you shouldn't be complaining about a game being too long. Well, guess what, buddy? I'm going to complain about it being too long because it's too long for the story it tries to tell. <laughs> I don't give a shit about yeah. any of these characters after 80 hours, and that that is a problem <laughs> right there. And I'm not going to no. invest an 81st hour or onward because I've wasted my time already. There, there's been nothing to keep me invested in this game. No. I, that is such a stupid thing to gatekeep, like yeah. how you're not supposed to think that you you you're supposed like a, that a long game is a bad game, because like, if it's boring, why do I want to keep playing it? Like, yeah, I, if I don't care, I'm not gonna invest the 150 hours that I need to finish this game. I'm just yeah, not gonna and, do it. I mean, it goes and, both like, ways. You can't make a long like, you game have and more content. Yeah. Yeah, like if you make a long game, that doesn't make it a good game. I mean, no. Ubisoft in particular pads their games with a bunch of useless collectibles that try to extend the life of them, and really, it just bores me. Okay, funniest game. Oh. Ooh. That's a tough one. Um, yeah. I mean, I really enjoyed the Borderlands series because they are, I do find those ones pretty funny. Mm. You know what my answer is? And it's not in the traditional sense of where the game is actually funny. The conduit on the Wii. <laughs> because I've never heard because of, this of the game. absolute absurd shit you could pull in multiplayer. There was like the, Jason and I used to play it on the Wii, and it was like the stupidest like FPS game that you could think of. It was like a sci-fi kind of Halo Wii rip-offy game. But there was this trick that you could do where if you kept swapping your gun with like a, a like a machine gun and a rocket launcher and you carried it up the stairs to this certain sp p point you could like combine the rocket launcher with the machine gun and you could hop out into the public and shoot rockets at a machine gun rate with like a machine gun size mag but you're shooting rockets and it was the absolute <laughs> stupidest shit that i've ever seen but it was so funny that game was so broken. People took it upon themselves <laughs> to absolutely shatter the multiplayer experience in whatever funny way they could, and it was amazing it because was... of that. Like, yeah, you weren't going there to win because you step outside and fixing. get vaporized by like these god <laughs> cannons people have created by just completely destroying the game and just tying little shreds of what they tried to do together. And they, they yeah. didn't do anything about it because it wasn't a high enough game. Like as soon as that game launched, that was the end of it. They're not thinking about the conduit again. <laughs> I mean, they made a sequel, but that, that, I think they that did. was a quick little cash print. But it's not like they had any online multiplayer support. They didn't give a shit if you were cheating in it. They're shocked you're playing the game <laughs> no. in the first place. They're not going to kick you out. <laughs> it was really funny, though, yeah. What about you, Nick? Deadpool the video game. Um, it came out oh, just before the game. first Deadpool movie. But to be honest, there are some parts of the game that make me think it's funnier than the movie. I love Deadpool. I love the character. I love the movies. It, it, but the game is just so funny. It is such a blast to play. It's a game that doesn't take itself very seriously. Like, y you know, the developers didn't put like the most effort into it. It's made by the same people who made the Transformers games, the War for Cybertron games. Oh, hell I mean, yeah. Studios. Oh, yeah. But it's a game that knows it's not a great game. It feels very like 2005 action adventure. You know, collectible coins here and there and hack and slash type of game. But so, so funny and so well written. And Nolan North, I think, because of that game, has become the, like, video game voice of Deadpool. And it's just, it's so much fun. I love it. 
Okay, popular, but I hate it. Fortnite. <laughs> yeah, that's an easy one uh, for that. I, I, I'll think of a different one. Um, but Kyle, please please elaborate while I figure out what I'm going to say <laughs> on why you hate Fortnite so much. I actually don't get why it's so popular. Like when we made the transition from Fortnite to Apex, like it was a, it was you know. We, Nick and I, I remember us talking about how we kind of weren't sure about Apex quite yet because mm -hmm. it was a little bit complicated and like we didn't get into it yet. But yep. once we were fully invested in it, we hit it hard. And oh, I every got time invested. I've tried to go back to Fortnite since, <laughs> I literally, it feels like my brain has slowed down or like I'm watching a game in slow motion because the gameplay is not fast, it like is not fun when you're playing against people like we talked about earlier that can literally build the fucking empire state building in a second and a half like it just <laughs> <laughs> like it doesn't become interesting because i'm not going to spend the time to learn how to fucking you know scramble my hands into uh, like positions to build like that on a controller and like it i just don't want to do that and so i just don't get it and like all these brands supporting it like Marvel and DC and Star Wars and everything like I I mean I get that they want to capitalize on the hype but like where I don't get I don't get it yeah Jason do you think of something <sighs> um I'm still struggling to like really think of one that I hate um there's a lot of games that have like I think similar to Fortnite like there's such a curve in like um ability that if you're unless you're a god at the game you can hardly play it at all which is why like i hate fortnite um <laughs> but i think like pugba or pubg as well like it's just such a broken version of that uh, battle royale game that i'm surprised that it's still popular because i think like the formula has been improved upon in other games but maybe they're just like some real hardcore people who just want to <laughs> yeah. want to go back to where that whole fad started. Well, so I remember like, when like, PUBG like, started the whole battle royale trend and then tried to sue Fortnite because Fortnite did it better. Yeah, but it's like you, it's not an outrageous concept. They're not the first game to ever do that thing. They're just the first popular one. But like mm -hmm. because there's so many games that have done it better, I can't. I don't know why people are still in that game because I've played it a couple times and it's not great. Like. It's not polished no. in the slightest. It doesn't really try to be. Yeah, I, I kind of regret buying it on PS4. It, it's one of those games that you don't know why there's a price tag on it. It should be free to play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's your popular but bad game, Nick? Um, or popular, popular but you hate it? Popular but I hate it, Rocket League. I know you guys were all over Rocket what? League when that first came out. I, like I just I could not I stand it. I really that. couldn't get behind it. No, it it just wasn't. I mean, for that's me. fair. Like, clearly, it's, clearly, it's all personal preference. It's all incorrect personal yeah. preference. But I get where you're coming. <laughs> okay. Um, favorite character. Oh. Oh. Um. Damn. I mean, I'm going to Joel right now. Yeah. From Last of Us. Okay. Because he's like an interesting and unique character. But also that game does so much in the storytelling that it's actually a deep character. Unlike some of the other video game characters that come around. Jason? I'm I'm struggling to think. I don't play a lot of games that have any kind of narrative to them, so normally the character doesn't matter. Uh you, you know what, we're going to go in order here, Nick. Uh, you give yours, and I'm going to quickly change <laughs> on mine for a little bit here, but I'll have something when you circle back around. Okay, my favorite character is Alan Wake from, of course, Alan Wake. He's oh. such a yep. nuanced and deep character, and you don't really see that in a lot of games. A lot of characters in games you can boil down to a single character trait, but he's got a lot yeah. of depth to him. He's... Uh, a former best-selling author who struggles now with writing block, anxiety, alcoholism, 
and has a very short temper, but is also a very devoted and loving husband and a great friend to his manager slash best friend. So a very interesting and deep character that you don't see a lot of in games. Yeah, and I think, like, game storytelling is evolving. Like, we are getting these, like, games nowadays that utilize the format in such unique and interesting ways to tell a story because like games in the in the scale in the grand scheme of media are still a relatively new thing like they've been making mm-hmm. movies since like the 1910s or whatever uh, or earlier um like they've only been making games since what like i don't know late 70s then yeah like since then and like the state that they are now is like totally evolved to what they were you know, mm-hmm. and so like using games as a storytelling method is so different and a whole different like ball field than like movies or TV or anything that like we're finally getting to that point now where people know how to utilize games and gameplay and putting yourself into a character and like what making you as the character walk around as like an experience mm-hmm. that it's, we're it's elevating tough. these characters. It's tough to craft a narrative experience out of the actual gameplay, too. And I think a a lot of developers have tried to sort of move away from the use of cutscenes, which I'm not necessarily a big fan of. I don't mind cutscenes at all if they're actually providing some depth to the story and to the characters. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's really hard to get character development out of running down the street in GTA and shooting up a bunch of people. Yeah, and, like, that's why... I like The Last of Us, especially The Last of Us 2, which is in my recent memory, because it uses cutscenes, but it also uses, uh, like, being the characters in these certain flashback, like, methods Mm -hmm. or or times, and, like, the risk they took with making you play as Abby for the other half of the game, it, like, makes you feel a certain way initially rage because you don't want to play as this person who you absolutely loathe but you Mm -hmm. also come to understand her perspective through playing as her and you probably only get to your feelings of her and your like your conflicted perspective of her uh and in contrast to ellie at the end because you spent that time playing as her and so using gameplay as like that sort of method to make you come around and feel a certain way about a character is something new and something I'd never experienced before. If there's one thing Naughty Dog does better than any other game developer in the industry, it's blending gameplay and narrative moments so seamlessly. The transition from you being in control of the character to a cutscene is absolutely flawless. And it's incredible sometimes Mm -hmm. because you feel like you're so in control of the game, but then something scripted happens that you feel like, man, was I just in the right place at the right time? Or were they really like guiding me towards this without me knowing it? Mm -hmm. Jason, did you think of somebody? I have the my my choice for this a little bit of a problematic character in the past but you know what he is dad of the year material we're gonna go with uh kratos uh specifically from uh the, the 28th the god of is it god of war 4 yeah yeah i mean talking it, about the more ju- recent just one? god of war yeah, yeah like the PS4, god of war? war just yeah. god of war yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah, who yeah. doesn't love a good old father figure uh, dad of the year material, if you ask me. He is raising his son right, embedding him with just great parental values. And that is, uh, that's my pick right there. <laughs> Most overrated. I mean, Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll also, I guess, Fallout 4. <laughs> I guess. Um, oh, I, I, you know, I, even going back to some of the other ones, I said Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was very highly rated. And, okay. I just had one that came to my mind. This is another game that I never finished. And Nick, you might want to... Are you sitting down? Yep. Breath of the Wild. I'm glad you said that. You know why? Really? Because why? that's my pick, too. Holy shit! I couldn't finish it, dude. 
I, the like, most I, overrated I game enough. of all time. And this is coming from someone wow. whose favorite game is Majora's Mask. Breath of the Wild is just... It, it actually makes my blood boil how much people lose their shit over this game. Because it did so many things yeah. wrong. I appreciate that they made it a completely open world Zelda game. I had been waiting for that. I appreciate yeah. that they added voiceover dialogue. However, the story, I should say the plot is non-existent. Because there is a story, but the story is all antecedent action. Yeah. It all happened before you take control of Link. The plot from the time he wakes up from the Shrine of Resurrection to the rest of the game, if you're not doing anything optional, is kill Ganon. That's it. There is no depth to it at all. It just tells you, go and kill Ganon. That's not even to get started on the stupid weapon durability system where every five hits, oh your weapon God. shatters into a billion pieces, and then you got to go so pick a new one out of your in yep. inventory, which interrupts the flow of combat. And by the way, to everyone who says that, oh, it makes combat more challenging, and you have to find ways to use your environment to win. No, it doesn't. What makes combat challenging and interesting is having enemy variety, not having a weapon that shatters every five seconds. Because once I upgrade my inventory, guess what? I can go get 20 of that weapon, and it doesn't matter anymore. But yeah, that is my rant. Uh, miniature rant about Breath of the Wild, but most overrated <laughs> game of all time. Zelda is my favorite okay, franchise in game, to favorite hate. series, but that game is so, so overrated. It pains me. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm, I'm trying to say that, you know, if you don't like it, you can't enjoy it. It is some people's favorite game. Good for you. I, yeah, I disagree that it is a little bit overhyped. Well, and here's the thing. I'm in, not even uh, saying it's a bad game. Of things. It's a good game, but I cannot no, no, stand no, the not. legions of people who swear it is the perfect game. Because it's not. Yeah, no. Okay, Jason. Jason. The Witcher 3... It's good. Oh, yeah, good one. I could see that. It's fine. It's just, it's, having played through it, the first time I played it, I actively disliked it and didn't really get that far into it. And then last Christmas, it was on a pretty decent sale on Steam or, like, somewhere around there. Yeah. So I started playing it again, and, like, it, the combat system's not great. It's good. No. I'm sure if I cared more, if I enjoyed the game more and got into the story, I'm sure it has a great story. But for how hyped that game is, as, like, the gamer's game, as, like, the stereotypical, like, if you meet a guy who's into video games, he's going to love The Witcher 3, for how, like, hyped up that is, it's okay. It's a good game. I don't even really care that much for it. It's fine. Yeah. No, that's fair. I, I could definitely see it being alright. The combat isn't yeah, the best, and it's a, a, it's a huge time commitment, too. It takes a long it's time. It's massive, yeah. I put in, like, a decent, like, some hours, and I hardly got anywhere, which is fine, because I think, like, actually the story is deep enough that you can put a lot of hours into it and, like, still be entertained by it, but with how high the bar was set for that game, I just didn't really connect with it, because it ended just kind of being an okay game with, like, honestly, a little bit clunky combat that doesn't feel yeah. that rewarding. <laughs> okay, most underrated. Ah, that's a good, I feel like Diddy Kong Racing did not get the attention it deserved. That was a fun game. That was a yeah. good... It was, like, more... It had an actual, like, story behind it. I don't think it was, like, a good story, but it was, like... It was the better Mario Kart. Yeah, it's but... hard coming around... Coming out around the same time as Mario Kart 64 because it's always lived in its shadow, and Mario Kart is yeah. Yeah. obviously so recognizable and such a household name that, yeah, Diddy Kong definitely gets overlooked. I feel like the Donkey Kong games in general, and the Diddy Kong games, like same umbrella, in general, they just don't get the respect they deserve. They've been a lot. There's been a lot of good. No, and I think not, that's. Great. I think so that's largely because the gameplay is a very similar vein to the Mario games. You have the 2D Donkey Kong platformers, which are the same essentially as the Mario 2D platformers. You have the. Th I mean, you haven't had a lot of 3D Donkey Kong advent adventures, but. Donkey Kong 64 was very similar to Super Mario 64. So, it's mm. like, it, people seem to gravitate more towards Mario as being the more recognizable character. 
Yeah. But I think the, the Donkey Kong games deserve more respect. People should play those. Mm. Screw Mario. He's boring. I think they do, too. <laughs> um, to kind of bounce off of your Screw Mario, I think the Mario Maker games need a little bit more cred. I think Mario Maker 2 is so much fun. It was really fun to make levels, and it's really fun to play other people's levels. Some people are so creative, it's actually stupid. I don't like they yeah, make better seriously. levels than the actual creators of Mario have and I spent hours in that game trying to do the little speed run challenges that people made and absolutely nailing these like perfect <laughs> frame jumps. Well, and it's, it's so really cool fun. that they include the styles of four different Mario games all in one because I I was on the fence yeah. when I got Super Mario Maker 2 like do I get this or do I get new Super Mario Bros? But then it's like, well, why not just get Super Mario Maker? Because then I'm getting the new Super Mario Bros. art style and unlimited yeah. levels, plus basically three other yep. games. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sure if you looked up, somebody had probably made every level that could exist in the new Super Mario Bros. <laughs> like, somebody just probably made them, like, verbatim. Yeah, just recreated them. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to do that, actually. I tried to make uh, World 1-1 from the original Super Mario Bros. in the uh, yeah. Super Mario 3D World style. It's kind of tough to cool. do, but yeah. Yeah. What's yours? My pick for most underrated is Fallout 76. Now, I, I know after um, hearing you rant about Fallout 4, you probably don't want to <laughs> hear that, but... <laughs> Fallout 76 got a really bad rap at launch because it was littered with bugs and there bad. were no in-game in NPCs. But it's it's such a cool game. I think maybe I'm biased because Kristen loves the game and her and I play it together all the time. We spent a whole summer just playing it nonstop and just adventuring together. So it's got a very sentimental place in my heart. But it, like... <sighs> Bugs aside, I mean, the combat is typical Fallout combat, so if you enjoy other Fallout games, you'll enjoy it. The exploration is, you know, you've got a pretty massive open world, and it's fun to just dick around in. But what really sells it for me is that there's this whole player-driven economy, which is such a unique thing, I think, that you don't see in a lot of games where you can go around to other players' bases and their camps that they've built and, like, houses and stuff. And, I mean, seeing the structures they built alone is really cool, and it's great to see the creativity of other players. But then, like, you go into their shop and you can buy items from them. And so it's entirely player-driven, and I just think that's such a cool concept. That does sound cool, but I will never touch it. <laughs> <laughs> What if it was on sale for five dollars? Mm, are you gonna pay me five dollars? <laughs> I might. I mean, I I might <laughs> buy you guys copies if you would play with me. Oh my god. <laughs> um, maybe another time. <laughs> I think okay. I'm busy that day. <laughs> okay. Most satisfying combat. Oh, Spider Man. That's... Yeah, Spider Man. That sounds fair. Yeah. I don't know if I need to explain that one. It's just saying something about <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, this is one that doesn't really need explanation. I'm trying to... Th like, I can't really... Nothing comes to mind, but, like... I've been playing a lot of, like, shooting games, if anything, lately. And I don't know if that really counts, because how do you make shooting combat really all that different other than, like, small alterations... Um, the combat I mean, actually, for Last of Us was actually quite good too. I never played Last of Us, which is kind of silly because I own it. Hmm. I didn't like the combat in it personally. I, you know, I'm just gonna agree with Spider Man. I have like I don't own it, but um, some of my roommates have PlayStation Fives. I played a little bit on them, and it actually did feel really good. <laughs> I have not like gotten that far into it, but it was enjoyable. I've got to go with the Batman Arkham series. And I think I might yeah. have to single out Arkham Knight in particular. It just does a, such a good job of putting you in Batman's shoes where you feel like you're just this hard-hitting, super 
quick reflex ninja who absolutely shit stomps anybody who comes at him. <laughs> and it's just so satisfying to like beat a guy down and then use a takedown on him and just snap his arm or twist his ankle yep. 360 degrees. So much fun. And then once you start mastering it and mixing in like the combos with his different gadgets, it it's so fast-paced and free-flowing that it's just a joy to play. That that was what really sold me on those games. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I like the combo in those two. I was kind of anticipating you to say that actually. <laughs> Cash grab. <laughs> I mean, could you pick a better definition for Marvel's Avengers? <laughs> like, <laughs> especially if you were buying it at full price. Like I said at the end of last episode, I think it should go free to play. But they're charging—they're not charging you for the expansions, which is nice. But if you want any of the cool ass skins, you're gonna have to cough up fifteen bucks uh, for per one. Skin. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's probably a. That's probably my where my mind's going for cash grab. Or I would even say the sports games. Oh yeah, why would you say this? I was gonna say the sports games. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, you can say, okay you can well say I guess we're all saying say sports games then because I was gonna say sports games okay. too. Yeah. Hardly like, any changes no, from year to year. Full price game. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I don't care about them updating how my favorite soccer player looks. Like, oh, they've patched out <laughs> that he no longer has a beard. This is worth eighty dollars. No, it was so shitty. So well, and they've only yeah. gotten worse too the with the hut addition passes. of modes like hut, yeah, hut, and yep. football ultimate team in FIFA, and with NBA, you've got the NBA Two K My Team mode, which is just. It's yep. so ridiculously cash grabby. You spend all this money to open packs of trading cards of players who, like, you're just going to buy the new game next year and have to yeah. pay full price for that too. And then the same game mode is going to come out, only you don't have any progress saved from last year, so you got to buy all the players yep. again. And they haven't done anything to change the game in a meaningful way. Nope. Nope. Um, fun at parties. I, I don't mean this in a sarcastic way. I mean, like, literally a fun <laughs> party game. Oh. I mean, I've literally hosted Super Smash Brothers parties. So I'm going to say that. Okay. I love the versatility of uh, Mario Kart because you can do it sober and it's fun. But it's still <laughs> as fun when you do, like, uh, drinking versions of the game. So I think, you know, it really all levels of party, you can still have a great time playing a little Mario Kart. You know what, I'm going to go with a throwback pick here. I'm going to say Rock Band, because I miss having a bunch of oh, friends come yeah. down, hang out <laughs> yeah. in my basement, and playing Rock Band for hours. Oh, no, that's a good times, pick. Yeah. That's a good pull. Forgot about that. Most innovative. Ooh. Uh, yeah, uh, PUBG. You know what? It, it births so much. <laughs> and it, it didn't even innovate yeah. that much. You know, okay, it did it at our portal. I'm going to lock in either portal or uh, PUBG. Ooh. Okay. But PUBG, only because it birthed such a large scene, it's not even like... It didn't do anything that crazy, but it just it inspired the imagination of people who made better games afterwards. So I think if I want to go like actual like cool game mechanics that impressed me, and I thought it was super unique and cool. I think Portal did it such a good yeah. job of that. Nick, I bet you're ready to say the Arkham series. No, <laughs> I'm not. I'm but, not no? Okay, well then I'm going to say I was, it. Because I was considering it that. for the combat, but there's another yeah. game I, I think I might pick for this one. Cool. Well then that's my pick, it's the Arkham series. Because I think it set the groundwork for a lot of the combat systems moving forward, especially in superhero games. Like Spider-Man, as cool as that combat system is, it like it does take stuff from the Arkham series and benefits mm -hmm. for it. So, yeah, yeah, and of course we also got the Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, and Shadow of War games out of the Arkham yeah, games pip, as well. Pip, pip, pip. Uh, I'm gonna say No Man's Sky, as shaky as it was oh, at yeah. launch having a full planet-sized planet as your open-world map, and not just one, but literally billions to fly around in to me was just mind-blowing 
Yeah. Sometimes you think about like what that game really is, especially in the state it is now, and like it's incredible that they, you know, they they stumbled to start, but they still pulled it off. Mm-hmm. And the state that that game in is is that game is in now is incredible. It's really fun. I'm gonna try to go through a few here that we're just gonna quick fire them, so we're not taking up too much time. Um, best free to play game: Rocket League, Apex <clears throat> Legends. I'm gonna go with Apex. Rocket Legends League was too. at one point free. I don't know if it still is. I, uh, I don't Rocket know League is, it is. It only recently became free to play. Yeah, oh, for a while it, 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 for a it while, took it like the jump from bucks. pay to free to play. Yeah. Yep. So it is now free to play. Yep. Yeah. But well, yeah, I'm gonna go with Apex Legends as well. Favorite console? Uh, I think GameCube. First thing to come to mind. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, if we're talking nostalgic, then maybe yeah, the the GameCube was where I played a lot of games, or the DS. Yeah. That was probably my favorite console for a long time. If you include DS and 3DS, those those like that family, was probably where I played most of my games. So yeah, I think I'll say that. Yeah, I mean, I kind of want to say PS4 because I've had so much fun with it. But I'm going to go N64. True. N64 is just, it's a classic. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer an alternative answer. I, this, I play so much Switch. I think it's beautiful for the yeah, people to pick it up Yeah, I was actually play. debating that. It's, it's, it is kind of genius. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for these last few, just fire off an answer, no explanation, and uh, okay. yeah, we'll we'll get through these ones pretty quick. Best first-person shooter. Apex Legends. Apex Legends. I'm also gonna say Apex Legends. Best game world. Oh, Skyrim for some reason. GTA. Red Dead Redemption 2. Five. Yeah. <laughs> Best third-person shooter. Gears of War. Ooh. Fuck. I actually don't know. The mo- third-person shooter I've spent the most time playing is Star Wars Battlefront 2, and, like, it's not really a full third-person shooter. Really? So, so I guess not Last GTA. of Us. I guess Last of Us. Yeah, Last of Us. Okay, I'm gonna go or, with yeah, GTA. I guess, 5. I guess GTA counts. I I never think of GTA as a third-person shooter for some reason. Yeah, I guess, I guess you could put it under action adventure. Two, which is yeah, my next care- category: best action adventure. Uh, the Last of Us Two. Jason. Ah. Uh, ooh. ooh, ooh. I don't think the Jack and Dexter series. Uh, maybe specifically the third, the second or third. But it was probably my favorite. Mm. I'm going to say Ocarina of Time. Oh, that's mm. fair. That's fair. Best remaster. Oh. Or remake. The Ratchet and Clank looks like they like that they hold up pretty good, so I'll do Ratchet and Clank. Damn it, uh, I'm kind of blanking on this one. Nick, you want to just go? I'll say Link's Awakening for the Switch. Oh, that's an interesting pick. I, I just I love the art style in it, and it's yeah. almost like a one to one recreation of the original game, but with modernized controls and such. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, sorry, I don't got one. Best RPG. I've had a lot of fun with Borderlands. Um, I think I put the most hours into two, so I'll probably take that one. Okay. Mm. Probably if say Skyrim. Counts. Skyrim was an RPG that I put the most time in, so yeah, I think that'll probably count for me. Okay. I'm going to say Mass Effect. Best soundtrack. Hmm. My mind's going Nintendo. Maybe Mario Galaxy. Or okay. Mario that, that's a pretty iconic One soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking Mario Odyssey as well. Okay. I'm gonna say Legend of Zelda: Twilight Princess. Oh, that's good too. 
Okay, best battle royale. Apex. It's Apex. I'm also going to say Apex. Best story. Last of Us Part 2. I might get a little bit... Th th that's probably a debated one, but I think it is the best one. I'm probably going to take Ocarina of Time. Okay. I'm going to say Mass Effect again. Saddest slash most depressing. Uh, Majora's Mask. <laughs> Last of Us 2. <laughs> I'm going to say Spider-Man. Really? Spider-Man was the first game that Both made me cry. Spider-Man... When Aunt May died, I was in tears. Of... Yeah, I actually was too. And The Last of Us, I also was uh, shedding a couple tears. I'm going to say Last of Us because I think I shed multiple tears at different times. So, <laughs> Best series or franchise? Maybe Elder... I might have to go Elder Scrolls. Yeah, that's a good choice. I'm going to say Super Smash Brothers. Okay. I'm going to go with Legend of Zelda. Yeah, that's, that's nice. pretty smart. Okay. Now, here's the big one. Best game of all time. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm probably biased by recent memory. But the game that I left and I said that was the most impressive thing that I've ever, like, played and also the most that I've ever felt, probably no surprise at this point. But it was The Last of Us 2. All right, I openly welcome people to come fight me dm me if you want my address you can show up to my house and we can brawl the best video game of all time is tetris that's I not mean, actually I'm sales figures answer. would support that conclusion so fair it's enough everything Chase. i want in a video game based entertainment it's perfect yeah. i've put there's no there's no game on this sweet planet earth i put more time into than tetris all right, Nick, let's Nick, hear what's it. Yours? I'm going to go with Ocarina of Time. Because yeah, it laid cool. the groundwork for so many games that came after it. And itself was such a good game. Nice. Okay, and then yeah. the last one for the speedrun category. The Boys. The GTA boys. 5. Yeah. Come it's... on. Find a more The Boys game than GTA 5. <laughs> I'm glad you guys said that because, yes, GTA 5 was my pick. Apex Legends is a close second, yeah, nice. but I think that's just the recency bias. Absolutely. Yeah. The longevity of GTA 5 and us playing it is unbeatable. <laughs> <laughs> so many great memories from this. All right, well, that is going to wrap it up for us. I want to say a huge thank you to Jason and Kyle for coming in for this episode. It was nice to sit down with you guys and chat about games. Um, I think next time we'll have a little more of a focused topic, but this was really more of a, a kind of getting to know you and helping our audience help get to know us. And so thank you to everyone who tuned in and watched. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the support on the channel, and hopefully we can continue to grow it. But well, um, Nick, thank you so much for having us as well. Always appreciate the invite. Yeah, of course. And I mean, I love having you guys. Of course, you know, it's nice to have such a diverse range of perspectives on topics within gaming. And it's such a, I feel like it's a, an underappreciated thing sometimes. And we don't talk about video games enough. So it's really nice to be able to sit here and have these conversations with you guys. Well, that's so nice from our end, too. All right, well, that's going to do it for us today. So thank you again for watching episode one of the L2 Games podcast. We'll catch you next time. Bye, everyone. Kyle, are you still there? No, I'm not because I muted myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been saying stuff. I've been like, I've been saying stuff. I've been like, subscribe to L2 Games, subscribe to Snuffs and Dubs podcast. So the only person that can hear me is my cats. So... <laughs> Yeah, I've been here. Sorry. Bye. <laughs> All right. See you later, folks. <laughs>